Hi, this video is a side-by-side -side comparison of Human to Touch from the UbiPods Foundation and Selfish OS from Yola running on the FX Tech Pro One. So that's this device with a five-row keyboard and 64 keys. Uh, and before I show some of the features of these OSs, I wanted to say a few words about those keyboards because 64 keys means you don't make many compromises compared to a real keyboard like that one. Uh, of course, this is a 10 keyless keyboard, so I don't have a numpad, but other than that, I have all the keys from a real keyboard, from a conventional keyboard. And on the Pro one, you are just missing this top right block here with page up, page down, uh, home hand, and, and so on, and the function keys. But other than that, you have all the alpha keys, um, you have the digits, you have the punctuations, and you have the modifiers on both sides. And basically, most of these keys are where you would expect them. There are some slight changes that I don't like, but not huge compared to other mobile devices with keyboards. Um, so you can see here that shift control uh, and this yellow arrow, which is basically Alt GR, depending on the OS you're using. They are on the left, but they are also on the right. And that is very convenient for uh, key combinations like Control A, for example, because that means you don't have to do these kind of weird gestures to combine keys uh, with the left hand side of the keypad or with the right hand side. You can just leave your thumb where they are and uh, you can combine from both sides. Also, the keys are small because this is a small device. For the comparison, this is a Pine phone. There's no keyboard on that one. And it is uh, actually a bit larger, wider than the, than the Pro One. You can see that here. And it's also uh, a bit taller. Uh, maybe you can see it better here. It's a bit taller. And of course, it's, uh, it's not as thick, but that's not a huge difference considering that we have a keyboard on that one. Uh, so, Compared to, for example, the Planet Computer devices, this is much smaller. Um, and of course, um, well, the, the, the keyboards from, from Planet Computer devices, the Cosmo Communicator or the Gemini, but I won't talk about them because these are clamshells uh, from Factor, so they, that means that they are more UMPCs and not very good at being phones. But the Astro Slide currently on uh, uh, Indiegogo is the same from, from Factor as that, except it's much bigger. And that's because the key, key, keyboard is bigger, the keycaps are are large and there is more travel distance, but they are made mostly for touch typing with 10 fingers, which is more convenient because you can actually sit your fingers on different keys easily, which is not doable with that. Uh, the Astro Slide can do term typing, but it's not going to be more very convenient with that because you have to lift your finger and go back to another key to, to hit different, uh, different keys. While on that one, for example, if I sit my, my thumb on the arrow keys here, I can just twist it like that and reach all four keys very easily without moving around. That means that I don't have to look at it, uh, to look at the keyboard because I know I can feel where my finger is while if I lift it and put it back, then I have to look uh, where I put, put it back. It's not, uh, it's not going to be uh, so easy to, to blind type uh, if I have to, to lift my, 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 my fingers. And uh, also bigger keys for turn type typing keyboards doesn't mean uh, more convenience because, for example, this is a GPD micro PC and it's also a turn typing keyboard. The keys are much bigger, as you can see. There's only 62 here, not 64. So, for example, we are missing control on the right. We just have shift. We don't have alt GR. So this is a significant uh, compromise, I think. You, that means that it's not easy to use US International on that device, of course. And they also came up with this weird layout here with uh, digits. Uh, on two rows, that's because they put a touchpad here, which is not a bad idea. Uh, but uh, there's also some more non-standard uh, positioning of keys, like this question mark here is next to space instead of being on the bottom row of the keyboard. So that is very weird. And I don't type as fast on that keyboard as on the Pro one. Uh, and I do many more double key presses on that because the, 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 the touch fitting is not as good. And when I press one, I'm not sure I'm uh, the key registered correctly and I might type twice in a row uh, which I which I never do with that one. That one I'm, I type at around 250 characters per minute uh, without trying too hard and I'm not doing any typos. So that's it. So that means that what I want basically what I wanted to say is that bigger keys is not necessarily better depending on what you want to do. If you want to use it handheld uh, type uh, while you are waiting for the subway for the bus then this is definitely better than the Astro Slide. But if you want to use it as a small computer 
uh, that you would use for composing uh, text uh, with, a, with a desk or with a table, then you might consider the Astro Slide. Uh, but it's going to be a much bigger device and the hinge mechanism is also a bit weird because uh, you can see that this one is very easy to open uh, and to close as well. With the Astro Slide it's more like you have this, uh, you, you, you have to, you can see the promotional video, but that you have to push the, the screen all the way like that until, until you reach the end of the keyboard and then you have to lift it like that. So that's doable. But I wouldn't do that all the time, and I would do it only if I'm if I know I'm sitting comfortably for more than five minutes. Uh, if I'm waiting for the bus, I don't want to do that all the time, and I would probably just use the touch keyboard uh, when I'm on the move or when I'm uh, when the device is handheld. Also, uh, Planet Computer devices have a MediaTek uh, CPU, which means that you cannot expect expect much community support. And you have to, you have basically what they are selling is what you will get, and do you won't see much improvement in the future uh, because there won't be any community work on that uh, on that sock. And that's kind of an issue with uh, with Planet Computers because they usually change device pretty quickly. They already have uh, are doing their third uh, device in, sh in just a few years, and so they are basically not supporting their device very long. So since they are the only ones to be able to um, support it and, and provide some development updates, that's an issue. And this means that we have more OSs available on that device than on the Planet Computers uh, ones, for example. So without further ado, uh, we will start the, the OS on both devices. So we have uh, Ubuntu Touch on the left with the official logo here, and this is a custom logo made by Mozen, um, an active community member. And we have an application in the community store that allows easily uh, changing the boot logo, so I use that one. You will see that the boot time is about the same for both. Ubuntu might be a little bit faster, but uh, on some occasions I had Selfish boot faster. I don't know exactly why. It's not always the same. Um, but I also have many more applications installed on uh, Selfish, so that might make it a little bit longer as well. Ubuntu is not ready yet, the UI is still starting, but it should be any time now. Yeah, so now Ubuntu is booted and it's ready, and Selfish uh, will be ready in a few seconds. Yeah, so now it's asking for my uh, device lock code and my SIM code. And once I tag them, you can see that something is happening immediately. It's applying patches to my UI. Um, these are patches that I think improve the UI. Uh, I, of course, it's optional, you don't have to do that. And you could also apply these patches uh, at boot time uh, and instead of a two-step process like now. But I prefer this two-step process because if for some reason I install some outdated patch that is breaking my UI, then I have a chance to interrupt the application and to start the vanilla UI in which I can fix things. So that's just a security measure, but you don't have to do that. So all in all, I think the, the boot time is about the same for both devices. So we are now seeing the, the lock screens for each OS. Um, if I put my phone in landscape, the, it's rotating on Selfish, but not a human too. I don't think there's any uh, landscape uh, lock screen on human too. And if I want to unlock it, I have to do it like it, if it was in portrait. So I have to type my password for the first unlock. And then it's uh, it's going to uh, landscape. Uh, there's only rotation, uh, landscape and portrait rotations once you are in the OS, but not in the lock screen. If I lock it again, then I can unlock it with my fingerprint. The fingerprint reader is working in, uh, in Ubuntu which is cool. On Selfish, uh, so I have my lock screen in landscape and I can, I can unlock it with fingerprint even on the first unlock. And from there you can see the both UIs. Um, on Selfish you have a status bar here that is only visible uh, when you are on the multitask view. So this is the multitask view, there's no application running at the moment so it's empty. And this uh, would be also the multitask view on Selfish, on Ubuntu. And there's a status bar, but this status bar is going to be visible 
uh, wherever you are. If you are uh, running an application in full screen, you will have this uh, status bar as well. And there's also your quick, um, your most common applications here on the left are might be those that you set uh, manually to be to be there uh, with a quick access. Um, so on, on Ubuntu, uh, you can you can lock the orientation to. Um, so you can see these all these sub menus that you can get from the status bar. Uh, there are many icons, icons, uh, notifications. So your notifications would be here on uh, Ubuntu. So you have to reach the top edge of the screen to pull this menu. So that means that you have to be rather accurate and you have to move your hand to go there. And there you can rock, lock the rotation. Uh, it will stay in landscape, but it will also stay in landscape if you uh, if you close the keyboard, which is I think it could be optimized. Uh, for example, on Sailfish, there's an application and a daemon uh, running in the background, and you can uh, close it. You can lock it to port to landscape when the keyboard is out, like that. Uh, but if you close close the keyboard, then it's uh, dynamic again. And I think that's a very nice uh, way to manage the keyboard. Um, so all these submenus. Uh, on Ubuntu are nice. They are not so easy to reach, but it's cool to have so many options uh, from anywhere. On uh, Selfish, there's also a top menu here that you can reach from anywhere. So you have your um, different uh, ambiences, which are like backgrounds and color, color um, system colors, uh, some shortcuts that you can set, and also some other um, other shortcuts here. Uh, th so those are toggles and those are shortcuts to uh, to your settings. And what what I like is that you can pull that from anywhere on the screen. So if I'm if I'm uh, holding the phone like that, I don't have to reach the top edge. I can just do that. Uh, you can see that there is a top menu here, but I don't have to tap this orange uh, uh, line. I just have to pull, and then I can uh, I can get all the options from this uh, from this top bar. Uh, so again, that means I don't have to reach the top top edge. And here you can also see that there are three pages in this application: timer, alarms, and stopwatch. I could type tap on them, uh, but I can also just use gestures like that. So my fingers can just say stay on the bottom half of the screen all the time. Uh, the only exception is for quick uh, closing applications uh, because you have to do that from the top edge. So if I do that, for example, it will close my applications. So I won't confirm it because I want to keep it open. But if I lift my finger now, this application will be closed. And I can also close them from the multitask view like that with a left gesture. So that's a, that's a patch, U, UI patch that I installed at the beginning. I think by default it's not possible, but uh, I believe it's a very nice uh, addition to the to the, the UI. So I know I've started several applications on both uh, both systems so that you can see the multitask view better. Um, on Selfish, you can also move the thumbnails like that. Uh, if you long press on one and then you can uh, move them around like this. I could close them using this cross as well and I showed you that you can also just use a left gesture like that. Um, when you are in, a, in an application, you can uh, go back to the multitask view with a short gesture on Selfish. And if you do a long gesture like that, then I can feel a vibration. So there's an haptic feedback saying that it's not doing the same as usual. And you can see that it selected this other application, which is the last one I opened before I was in my media player, media player here. So if I do that, it will go back to the last application, which is the, this one is the community store. And you can see a lot of patches uh, for the UI and well, many many different applications uh, that you can also show in uh, in uh, categories. Uh, so there are, there's a lot of stuff here in this community store. So again, long long gesture uh, back to the last used application and short gesture go back to the multitask view. In Ubuntu, it's the opposite. Um, if I am in an application, that these are my settings, uh, a short gesture will bring me uh, the last used application. And a long gesture, but a really long one, as you can see, uh, will uh, show me the multitask view. I would prefer it to be the other way around, like Selfish, because I, I think it's more useful, at least for me, it's, I, I would 
more, most of the time want to go back to the multitask view instead of the last one. And I would also like to adjust the value so that the long gesture is a bit shorter than that. I think it would work okay in portrait. Um, uh, but so if I start one, I can do a relatively short gesture to go back to the multitask view. It's a bit long still to me, but I think it's uh, very acceptable. And you can see here in portrait why I don't like this uh, multitask view because it's a bit cluttered and you have to swipe around to see all your applications. While in Selfish, even in Portrait, you can see all your your applications, your open applications. That's uh, something I prefer. In in landscape, it's a little bit better on Human too, but still not my favorite. I don't like this 3D uh, 3D perspective, 3D effect. But it's probably not a bad choice because uh, since it's similar to Android, most users are probably used to that. Um, so what else? Uh, I wanted also to show um, the, oh yeah, to close applications when you are here in the multitask view. Uh, in, in Ubuntu, I don't think you can close an application when it's in full screen. I think you have to go to the multitask view first and then use uh, either an upward or downward uh, move like that. Um, so notifications will be always there in, uh, in uh, Ubuntu. In Selfish, they will always be on your left, like that. Um, and they will be accessible even if you are already in a full screen application. You can do a left gesture and and show your, your notifications. And that works as well if you are in portrait. Uh, so if I am in my uh, app store, for example, left gesture shows me my notifications. So it's a, I, I like the event screen in, uh, in Selfish. So I can show you also the camera on both systems. So the application drawer quotation is uh, blocked. The application drawer in Ubuntu is on the left, like that, while on Selfish it's on the bottom. And I have several pages of applications like that. So I can start the camera. And you can see them now. They are both uh, smooth enough, I think, working correctly. Uh, in Selfish, there is support for this hardware button here, which is a two-step shutter buttons, shutter button. So first step is uh, focusing, and second step is taking a picture. And you can show your previous pictures with a swipe. And on Human 2, it's, it's not doing anything. I think it's not supported yet. Probably will come in the future, but for now, you have to use the touch button and then you can go to your previous pictures with a swipe in the opposite direction. Um, also, both systems, of course, allow you to, uh, you to pass phone calls. Um, so you have a phone application here in Ubuntu. It's locked to portrait, so whenever this, this application is open, well, your gestures are kind of uh, broken because it's taking uh, priority apparently. And even if I rotate it, it's not working. So I have to close it to get it back to a uh, landscape orientation. I won't show the phone application in Selfish because I have some uh, phone numbers in my history, but it's, a, it's about the same. Um, both systems support dual, dual SIM. Um, and also, I can show the terminals. Uh, so in Selfie, in uh, Ubuntu, 2 the terminal is asking for my root password. I don't really know why, but that's the way it is. And you have some tab bars, some tabs at the at the top. So that's nice. You can have uh, you can have several uh, several terminals uh, at the same time in the same application. So that's a cool feature. The only issue is that it's taking some uh, vertical space, and since you already have a status bar at the top, that's that makes two lines that are lost. Uh, and that you cannot use for the content. While on Selfish, uh, you can also start several terminals, but they won't be uh, separated as tabs. And um, but you have the full uh, vertical uh, space available for the content because there's no status bar. You can show the status bar still if you just do, uh, you just initialize a gesture to return to the multitask view, but you don't have to confirm it if you don't lift your finger. So you can just go back to the terminal like that. So you can always check 
your uh, battery level or the time doing that. Uh, regarding uh, web browser, the web browser in uh, in Ubuntu is very good. Uh, it's called Morph. Is it the web browser? No, I want my web browser. So it's uh, very good. It supports key bindings. Um, yeah, I have an issue with my Wi-Fi, but that that has nothing to do with uh, with the web browser. Um, so for example, if I could do Control R, it should reload and start Discord. But again, that might be my Wi-Fi. Yeah. So yeah, you can see now it's working. I'm sorry for these issues. These are not related to Ubuntu. Um, on Selfish, the web browser is not as good. The default one is not as good. Uh, I am not using the la latest uh, Selfish version. Um, I heard that it's improved a lot in the last one, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have it yet. So, but it's fast. And what I like is that the the URL, the URL bar is at the bottom. So again, I can just keep my fingers on the bottom all the time. I don't have to lift them, which is really something I like and that, that I dislike on Android. You always have to lift your finger on the top. But what I do is I usually use uh, my LXC container, uh, which is a Debian container. So I can start an X session, use my fingerprint, fingerprint to unlock it. And now it's starting Debian. So basically it's Debian running in Selfish. And in that I can use my, uh, I can use Firefox, the desktop Firefox version. So this is my app door. And it will take some time to load because uh, I have uh, uh, add-ons installed and also probably 15 to 20 tabs in my session. So it's, it takes some time, but you can see that once it's done, it's uh, very, very responsive and you can really use that. That's the web browser I use all the time in Selfish because I know that the native one is kind of limited. Um, also, well, in, uh, in Morph, even though it works well, uh, again, there is some lost uh, vertical space at the top because of this uh, tab, this tab bar, this URL bar and the status bar. So in the end, when you are using it landscape, you don't have much space. Why, for example, as you can see here in my Firefox uh, UI, which I customized a bit to hide, uh, to hide the, the, the top bar here, I can really have a lot of uh, space for, for the content. Um, but it's still nice to see that uh, key bindings are very well supported in Morph, like a new tab like this works very well. Control, control W to close tabs also, Control R. App stores, I showed the app store quickly on Selfish. So this is the, this is the community app store where you can see the recently updated applications. And once you, uh, if you open one, for example, I don't know, that one, for example, you can see the screenshots and you can preview them. Um, you can check the change log from there as well, which is cool. So, and you have some comments. Uh, so this is the community one, but there's also um, official uh, store here where you can find, uh, other applications. Sometimes, sometimes they are the same. Uh, sometimes they are different. So it's best to have both installed. On um, on Ubuntu, uh, the App Store is, I think, basically it's Snaps. It's uh, installing Snaps, and you cannot really use APT to install stuff on Ubuntu because the file system by default is read only. Um, so you can set your file system to read write, and then you are able to use APT to install new applications, but they don't necessarily work uh, because there is a Wayland uh, implementation here that is, not, that is not always supported by the apps you might install. So you might have them uh, showing up in the, the app drawer, but when you start them, there won't be any window for them. So that's an issue. And I think you're supposed to only use this uh, app store uh, with snaps or uh, what they call uh, Libertine, uh, which is basically like uh, chroot or lxc container which uh, 
like like what I have here on the right. Um, and in this Libertine container, so you can see here that I have Ubuntu Xenial installed. And from there, you can install some application. As you can see, I'm trying to install Firefox here, uh, since it's uh, it was already that's already something I tried before booting the system, but uh, I rebooted and it's still trying to install it. And unfortunately, it's not working. I don't know exactly what is wrong, but if I show the details here, uh, it's telling me that it's ready, that uh, everything everything looks good, except it's not installed yet. And I don't have it in my app drawer here. So there's something I'm missing. I'm missing with uh, Libertin, but it's supposed to work. So I think with some uh, some research, you could get that working. There's also Unbox, which is Android in a box. Uh, so I installed it. Uh, it looked okay. It was working from the command line, except uh, it's supposed to use ADB to install APK, APKs, and I couldn't get my device, my emulator, detected by ADB yet. So I think it's just some uh, some terminal uh, work to do again. There's probably some some tricks to adjust to make that work. But other than that, you should be able to run APKs using Unbox, uh, as which is basically a LXC container running on the read. So uh, again, the same as Debian here, but with on the read inside. And then you can uh, you can use that to run applications. Uh, so that's about it, I think. Um, both of them are very good alternatives, I think, to Android. Um, I would use any of them over Android. Uh, with now, with uh, I would like both of them. I prefer Silfish, that's but I'm, I've been using it several years since several years, and I have it uh, well customized to my to my liking. And I have also many applications I already installed. My LXC container LXC container is working very well, also, so I'm used to that. But if I didn't have that option, uh, I would probably go with Ubuntu Touch with no with no issue. Um, I think Selfish might be a little bit more uh, feature complete at the moment, uh, but Ubuntu is evolving fast, and it's also Selfish is using some deprecated uh, Wayland uh, protocols that make it a bit hard to uh, develop applications and to port applications already existing for other systems. There's no such there's no such issue in um, in Ubuntu, so development might be a little bit faster, uh, but it all depends on the community. While here it's a community port, but we are getting the OTA updates uh, from the porters. So uh, whenever Selfish is updated uh, on the official devices, a few weeks later we get the updates from the updates from the porters, and you also have OTA updates on Ubuntu. But uh, I don't know yet at which pace. I think it's uh, it's fast as well. And since this is kind of a niche device with a keyboard, there's not many people owning it, but uh, people who have it are very attached to it. So the, the community is very active. And I think it's a bit like the N900 in its time. Um, since there's no, there's not many competitors for this de for this device, the community support is actually very good. I forgot the most important. Uh, the Pro One supports HDMI out, so that means that depending on your OS, you're supposed to be able to plug um, an external monitor to the USB-C port and have video out working. Unfortunately, that doesn't work on Selfish yet because uh, all the devices that had an official Selfish version or a community port so far had no hardware support for HDMI out, so no one came up with the software for that. Someone is working on it at the moment in the community, but we have no idea how long it will take and if it will work. Uh, so we can just cross fingers and hope that it will work because I think it would be a very huge uh, improvement because since we have LXC containers running with uh, desktop applications running, for example, I can start a dark table if I want or Telegram desktop. I won't do that because I don't want you to see my contacts. But dark table, um, and I can put it in full screen, and here I have Darktable running on that device. Uh, and I can close it if I want. So, if we plug my uh, USB-C hub to that device, you can hear that it detected something, but it only detected my mouse and my keyboard, which is not too bad already, that's already something. So for example, 
uh, you can see my mouse is uh, moving now and I can also use my keyboard to start a new uh, terminal for example so this is a new terminal and I can move it around I can put it in full screen I can type something on it and I can do typos as well I can uh, put it as a uh, floating window and resize it and so on. So imagine if we had if we had um, external display on that. That would be the perfect uh, travel device, and you could uh, you could you could work on it in the airplane, for example, and then plug it on the TV at the hotel, and you would have a computer uh, with uh, or without an external keyboard and mouse, or using just the built-in uh, display and keyboard. That would be really perfect, and I think that would be even better than convergence because there's no there's no trade-off. This is a real um, window manager from desktop. I'm using i3WM here, but you could use uh, GNOME, for example, or um, XFCE, uh, whatever you want. Um, on Ubuntu Touch, um, you have HDMI working uh, out of the box. So when you plug it, you will see that my external monitors this time are detecting something. And here we go. So I now have um, my mouse is working as well because um, my mouse and keyboard are connected to the to the display here from from this cable here. So that means that USB peripherals are working as well. And I have two displays, but they are just mirroring because there's no multi monitor support in uh, Ubuntu 2 at the moment. So it's just because these two monitors are connected to each other using DisplayPort daisy chaining, but they are basically the same thing uh, showing. So there's no extended uh, desktop. But from there, I can use my keyboard and my mouse to start new applications. So I can start the terminal, for example. It will ask me for a password in Ubuntu Touch. I don't really know why, but that's it. I can start my web browser as well. And you can see that all the windows are floating. Um, so that is really a desktop. Oops, sorry, my camera is falling down. And I need to decrease the brightness. I'm sorry for that. So the focus is not very good i think but i'm i'm using a very wide angle camera that means that everything is very small for me on, on the camera so i cannot really adjust the focus i'm sorry um so this is what you get everything is floating win windows uh, i can reload that because apparently it didn't work very well so you have uh, the browser here um uh, you don't have much control on how this window manager is working on the desktop for example the buttons are on the left which i hate but that's what they came up with and you don't really control the task the taskbar either it's just an icon taskbar with these little dots showing when an, when an application is open and i prefer to have full names and full labels in my taskbar i prefer to have it uh, horizontal than vertical and i don't think you can uh, change that in uh, Ubuntu Touch, but that's just the first implementation and that's still convergence. That means that you have a mobile OS with mobile the display on the, on the phone, uh, but when you plug something, then uh, it's back to, um, to a desktop uh, implementation. And the, the phone turns into a touchpad as well. Uh, in case you don't have a keyboard or mouse, you can use that to move uh, your cursor and move your windows around, for example, like that. So that is very convenient. It's not like having a real desktop computer in your pocket because of this uh, uh, this uh, window manager that is not very flexible. But you have also other alternatives. For example, there is Ibris Mobian, which is a Debian uh, implemented into mobile, and it's using Fosh UI, which is not Lumery, not the same uh, UI and, as this one, but it's also supposed to support convergence with uh, both desktop uh, floating windows and mobile full screen windows. I think it also has some support for tiling windows as well. Um, and there's also Arch ARM, which is using Fosh as well, um, except it's using Arch as a base instead of, instead of Debian. So these are for the other Linux OSs that you can use. You also have several uh, Android flavors like stock Android, Linear OS, and also AICPQ. Uh, which I didn't try because I don't really like the, the Android uh, UI in general. So even if I'm using Lineage OS or AICP, it's still going to be Android. And I don't like that. I don't like also all the um, 
privacy issues issues and um, monitoring issues that they, that can be with Android. But um, also on the longer term, uh, I hope we will get Memo Leste, which is the open source version of uh, Memo Five. Um, that was the OS running on the almighty nine, uh, N900, which was a great device, but I think this one uh, is a very good successor to it. So Memo Leste would be very good on that. And uh, also Postmarket OS, uh, which is based on Alpine Linux. Uh, and it's a very good uh, distribution as well. So I think these two OSs will be very good, but they need mainline kernel to run on a device. So this is not mainline yet, but it has been progressing very fast lately. I heard that it's booting, uh, it can boot from mainline now, so that will be, I think that's a huge milestone and maybe we will see some development on Leste and PostMarketOS from now on. I hope so at least.